ADO is an emerging e-bike brand that's been dominating the market since the first launch last year. The e-bikes are rigorously tested by the SGS certified testing lab. Today, we are visiting the lab to see what's going on behind the scenes. So now we are at the research and development center of the ADO e-bike and Kevin, one of the engineers from the lab. Nice Hi, to see Kevin. You. Nice to see you too. And he's going to show us everything in the lab, like how they test it, how they symbol, you know, everything. So Kevin, I'm just so excited to see it. So let's, let's go. go, let's go. Sure. All right, a little bit more about ADO e-bike quality testing lab. I was told that the ADO has co-built the lab with SGS and is the first QTL in the e-bike industry, which of course has been certified to SGS international standards. With a planned investment of over 2 million US dollars and comprising of more than 8,000 square feet in area, the lab is able to carry out about 60 quality testing projects covering almost every aspect and every part of an e-bike. But no worries, in this video, we're not going to go through those 16 projects, otherwise this video would be endless. Instead, we'll give several major tests a quick look so you know the basics of what an e bike would go through before being delivered to your home. The first test equipment is the programmable constant temperature and humidity test chamber. That's a long name. Basically, it allows you to set the chamber to an extremely high or low temperature and extreme humidity. And then you put the bag in the chamber for a certain amount of time and then take it out to see the status of it. Just check out the frost on the bike. And you know what? The seat bag is still working. At the same time, they have to make sure there's no rust, no oxidation, blackening, or other defects on the surface of the e-bike. You can also put the bag on a device and let it run and then put the bag in the chamber to let it work for a certain amount of time under the conditions you set, thus imitating different environments the bag might face. The second test equipment is the thermal shock test chamber. It's for rapid change in detection of high and low temperature resistance of metal products. It has up and down chambers. You can set each chamber at different temperatures and other parameters, and then start the cycle and check out the test materials of that. It makes sense. Like a lot of customers ride outdoors in minus tens of degrees, and then park the back indoors in the warmth. You have to make sure the back is still in good shape. Before we get to the next equipment, let's wear some protective gear like masks, glasses, and gloves, because it is the sword spray test machine. Just like the name suggests, this machine is for sword spray corrosion resistance tests. They can carry out several different sword spray tests, for which I will just leave them on the screen. For all the test materials, have to be free of defects such as rust tracer. The next machine is the UV accelerated weathering tester. They use fluorescent UV lamp as the light source to simulate the UV radiation and the condensation in the natural sunlight to test the weathering resistance of the material. As complicated as these machines are, for each equipment, they have very detailed documents like the test standard, reliability test report, use report, maintenance report is that they attach to the management board. This would make each one much more organized and easy to maintain. Those are basically all the machines from lab 1, not going to the lab 2. The first test equipment we see is the bicycle comprehensive testing machine. How comprehensive is it? Well, with it, obviously you can test the range, like with or without a system mode. How long it can run? Brake test. The machine will record the sliding distance after braking. Road test. The drum has obstacles, so it can imitate different road surfaces. Kevin told me this machine is even able to do a climb test, pedal torque and a mode output torque comparison test. I don't even know what they are. So yeah, it is a comprehensive piece of test equipment. Moving on to the bi-directional fatigue test machine. It is mainly used for the fatigue life test of bikes. The equipment adopts a computer-controlled dual-channel two-way power system. It can carry out various tests like saddle tube fatigue, crank combination fatigue, each racer. Though I'm showing you is the pedaling force fatigue. Kevin told me that they normally test 100,000 times for each part, and they have to withstand that without being deformed, cracked, or broken. 100,000 times! Adil told me that's the equivalent of 10 years worth of riding. That's pretty long. I think someone is going to steal this back before it breaks down. The equipment beside it is the frame strength and shock resistance test machine. As you can see, it's designed for the vertical vibration test standard of the bicycle frame. 
Again, the frame has to withstand 100,000 times testing. What we see now is the frame front fork assembly job tester. It mainly detects whether the frame and the front fork assembly meet the standard requirements when the frame and the front fork assembly fall from a certain height under certain load conditions. As time is tight, I'm not going to elaborate every test machine they have in the lab, but don't get me wrong, they literally have every piece of equipment for every part of the bike. Battery? Of course, they have a professional battery cabinet for that. This cabinet will test the battery in 55 degrees Celsius condition to see if it will work. After all, the battery is one of the key safety components for our e bikes. <laughs> Pedals? Yes. Motor? They have. You know what? They even have a machine to test the strength of the chain. Lastly, I'd like to introduce a very interesting machine. Actually, I really want to sit on it to try it myself because I guess it has the same principle as a massage chair. Of course, Kevin didn't allow me. This is the vibration test machine to test the cording packaging. You set the vibration speed and time to let it run, thus simulating the possible pulsation or concussion the box might face during transportation. Kevin also showed me the sample preparation room where they assemble samples when they are in the R&D e bike. We went on to see the trial production workshop. What that means is for a new e bike they self developed They will make maybe 50 or 100 pieces first to test to see if there are any problems. And then 1,000 and even more. The time we were visiting was not a busy day for the workshop. There are only a few workers there. But still, we got a quick glimpse of how they assemble a tire, handlebars, and a cable wiring. We also checked out the assembly line. One special thing about this room is they can test the back right over the production line. They have speed bumps and slopes there, so the testers can give feedback about the back right on the spot. All right, that's basically the ADO's quality testing lab. There's much more I didn't show you because the time was tight, but I've got to say, I learned a lot. This tour has definitely broadened my knowledge about the e-bag industry, and I'm just glad that there are some brands like ADO who are willing to put a lot of money and effort to build a rigorous lab to strengthen the products. This could also explain why ADO is able to stand out from the crowd with such a short amount of time. Later that day, we went out to try ADO's new e-bags, since they are prototypes, so I'm unable to show you details of them, but I was amazed to see how versatile and smart this ADO e-bags are. With a strong backup of ADO's qualified testing lab behind them, I just cannot wait to see what ADO has to offer in the future. Thanks for watching. I'm Sammy, I will see you in the next one.